There was a time my parents went on a trip to Europe. I was taking care of their house. I was home for the summer from school anyway, so it was fine. I had been there for a few weeks and it was pretty quiet. I just went to work, came home, had some time with my friend, enjoying the house to ourselves and whatnot. But one night, I was just laying there watching TV when I heard this really weird low whistling sound coming from the window that was behind the couch. It struck me as sort of odd, and I just shrugged it off. But then it happened again. It totally sounded like it was a person standing up against the window whistling. I looked out the window and obviously there was no one there, so I figured I should go check it out. If it was something like the wind on a siding, I should probably fix it because that would get annoying. So I walked out into the backyard. The backyard in my parents' house is really, really pretty. It's sparse, but sort of forest that leads to a road on the other side. So I looked at the house and didn't see anything. But then I heard the sound again. It was coming from the woods in the back. I was pretty creeped out at this point. And of course, I couldn't see anything in the woods. So I hurried back through the door and I locked it behind me. I never really heard that sound again for the next few days. Until one night, I was asleep in my room and I could have sworn I was awakened by the whistling sound against my second floor window. I listened hard and it was dead silent. So I decided I should go ahead and look out the window. I did that whole thing where I crept super slowly towards it and just sort of peeked through it. Outside my window, there was a man just standing there. I was really sleepy, so I can't know how much of this I'm misremembering. But he was just sitting there staring at me. I was completely frozen, and slowly, the man pursed his lips, and I could hear that whistle again. It was crystal clear. It made me feel like crying. I tore myself away from the window and I hid under my covers. The next night I insisted that my friend stay with me. He did. And of course nothing happened. He figured that I was just tired and delirious and maybe I was right. It gets kind of anticlimactic here but I didn't hear it for another week or so. And when I did it was just one small whistle just happening randomly. Coming from a wall or something like that. It just happens every week or so, and it always freaks me out tremendously. To this day, I would never stay in that house alone anymore. This happened two years ago. My name is James, and my girlfriend at the time was Susie. Susie and I got into an argument about a girl. She was just texting me about the edibles. The girl just wanted to know who had edibles and the prices on them. I remember I used the bathroom and after I came back to the living room, I saw Susie on my phone and she looked angry. She started asking questions about the girl. You know, regular questions, am I cheating on her? Is she pretty? The most disturbing one was, if she was right here right now, would I kiss her or my girlfriend? That was the PG version of what she really asked. I told her she texted me about edibles and besides that, the girl doesn't even like guys, but I don't think my girlfriend knew that. So we continued to argue for about 20 minutes. I started to say this is stupid and I remember looking at the clock and it was 11 p.m. Since she was staying over that night, I told her we should just stop fighting and try to get some sleep or watch a movie. We agreed and turned on a movie. We were watching Don't Be a Menace to South Central while drinking your juice in the hood. As we were watching the movie, I noticed she was on her phone typing fast and just really involved in her phone. Every time I leaned in a little closer to see what was going on, she would always move her phone away and just give me a cold shoulder. We continued watching the movie until I heard somebody at my door. I said, I wonder who that could be at this time. Again, I looked at the clock and now it was one in the morning. My mom was in her room asleep, but after she heard the doorbell, she woke up asking who that was. I told her I didn't know, but I was going to find out. So as I started going to the door, 
I heard whispering from my girlfriend, like she was on a phone or something. I didn't really pay attention to it, so I finally got to the door and I looked through the peephole. I was met with some tall dude, wearing mostly all black. I talked to him through the door, and I asked him, what do you want? He replies with, I'm just here to drop off a package, sorry I'm late. And I was thinking, who delivers a package at one in the morning? So I told him to leave, and he could come back some other time to deliver the package. He said no, in a deep commanding voice. Just in that moment, my ex-girlfriend Susie comes walking towards me with a grin on her face. She says to me, so you're really not going to tell me who that girl was texting you? I explained that she wasn't anybody, and I didn't know her like that. And this is the wrong time to be asking me a question like that when there is somebody at the door I didn't know. To this day, what she said still gives me the chills just thinking about it. She said, the guy at the door, he's here to get rid of you. At first, I gave out a nervous laugh and said, that's not funny. She said, yeah, it is. Well, at least for me, it is. As this was going on, the guy at the door kept messing with the door handle, trying to get in. So I was leaning up against the door, preventing him to come in. As I looked behind me, Susie was gone. A few seconds later, she comes back with a knife and said, either he's going to get you or I will. I started flipping out and thinking, what am I going to do? I can't die right here. Just in that moment, I heard a commanding voice saying, back away from the door or we'll shoot. I thought to myself, what the fuck? So I swung open the door and there was the police. One of the police officers told Susie to drop the knife because when I took my eyes off of her and I opened the door, she was right behind me, like literally right behind me. But the officer saying that must have scared her and she dropped the knife immediately. Apparently while all this was going on, my mom called the cops and explained the situation the best she could. She pretended to be asleep so she wouldn't cause attention to herself and could get help as fast as she could. The police arrested both of them and took them to the station. Apparently the guy that was there was her cousin. And the whole time the movie was playing, she was texting him, telling him to come over and quote unquote, deal with me. I'm just happy that I'm still here today. And my mom saved my life. I don't even want to imagine what they would have done with me. My name is Kevin. This story took place seven years ago when I was 13. I had a sleepover at my friend Paul's house one night. This wasn't the first time we had a sleepover. What we would do is play video games until around 11 p.m. Then we would start trolling people on Facebook. And this night was no different. Paul and I spent the evening eating McDonald's, playing video games and watching scary movies up until around 10.30 p.m. when we logged into Facebook using a fake account we created and would send messages to people we knew. We came across one guy who lived in our area whose name was Frank. He was a black dude, buff, and had tattoos. For some reason, we thought it would be funny to prank call him as his phone number was listed in his bio. We had a ring twice before he picked up. He picked up with a firm, yeah. Paul made a joke about Frank and his appearance, and we both were laughing. Frank then started cursing and yelling, and we hung up the phone laughing our heads off. The rest of the night, we made more prank calls and commented childish things on people's accounts. I think it was around 1 a.m. or something. Me and Paul were getting tired while watching a movie and then we received a text from an unknown number. I asked who was that, and it said, that's so funny, with a picture attached to it. After examining the picture properly, we saw it was a street sign that wasn't far from Paul's house. We both looked at each other, scared and confused. What if they come to my house, Paul asked. I tried to calm him down and think rationally. He wasn't at his house, only nearby. Maybe he is only guessing 
where we are to freak us out a bit. We carried on watching a movie, hoping the phone wouldn't go off again. About 10 minutes later, however, we received another text without a picture this time, and it read, look outside. Me and Paul froze in fear. I remember being so afraid to even move. The lights were off, so you couldn't see us from outside. So I got the courage to take a sneaky look through the blinds. I couldn't see anyone, not even a car. After scanning the street properly, I said, Paul, there's no one out there. He checked as well. I told him it was probably just a text to scare us. He doesn't know where our house is exactly, like I said earlier. It didn't leave our minds, but we started to calm down a bit. Plus, we didn't receive a text message for a while now. And about an hour later, me and Paul went downstairs to make some noodles. As we were cooking, we get a phone call from an unknown number. Of course, it had to be that guy who had been texting us. I said, don't answer. The phone stopped ringing. Paul then texted the number saying, I'm sorry if we upset you, but it was just a prank. The next thing that happened was the scariest thing I've ever experienced. A phone lit up just outside the kitchen window from the backyard, and a very large man was standing there looking at us. It was Frank. He looked so angry and held up a large knife and made a huge scratch into the window to where our necks were. We jumped out of our skin, screamed, and ran upstairs to Paul's parents. We told them there was a man outside. They came down and checked the backyard and Frank was gone. We didn't tell the whole truth as we were afraid of getting in trouble. I don't think we slept the whole night. We still had sleepovers at Paul's house, but we never pranked or trolled anyone again. We also didn't hear anything from Frank, but we didn't need to. We got the message. One night, while walking home, it started raining. Just what I needed, I thought to myself. I had no umbrella and I was in the middle of a road that crosses a forest. With no place to cover, I decided to keep walking and wait for a car to pass and maybe hitchhike. Around 10 minutes later, I started listening to a car approaching from behind. I looked back and the car stopped by my side. Slowly, the car window opens and I could see a man inside. It was dark, so I couldn't see his face. I heard the man ask, do you need a ride, son? I told him yes, please, because there's no way I was going to keep walking in this rain. This guy looked like an old man. He was skinny, with a wrinkly face. He didn't look dangerous at all. He actually seemed nice. We did some small talk until I was reaching my destination. I told the guy to drop me here, and I could walk the rest. The rain had stopped by now. The guy said nothing, so I repeated again. You can drop me here. He says, no, 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 not yet. You're not ready. What? I thought to myself, I'm not ready for what? I was getting nervous, so I tried one more time. Please, sir, let me out here. He looks at me with his eyes wide open. Now I can see his face. The guy looked old and his face was wrinkled with sharp teeth and he said, I said no. I felt sick and I thought I was going to throw up. I was stuck there with that guy. I thought my only way out would be to open the door. I tried opening the door but it was locked and I am in full panic by now. I feel a weakness going through my body as I feel myself pass out. Finally my eyes close and everything goes black. I woke up in the bed. I look around and it looks like a shack. The place looks trashed and smells terrible. At the side of the bed, I see some basic medical equipment. I listen to footsteps outside near the door. Without having a lot of time, I pretend I am still knocked out and I wait. I don't keep my eyes shut. I leave a small opening. I wanted to see who was coming. The door opens. I see someone. 
I keep opening and closing my eyes very little to make sure he doesn't see I'm watching him. He reaches my side of the bed. He turns to the other side and starts picking up the medical tools. What is he going to do to me, I thought. With very little time to make a decision, I needed to do something quick or God knows what will happen. I gained courage and I slowly get up. I started running to the door. While I was reaching to the door, I took a glimpse on the right and there was an open door. Inside is an image that I would never forget. I saw a body of some random person and I wanted to throw up, but right now, I needed to escape. I opened the door and I ran through the woods. It was very dark. I couldn't see where I was going, but I didn't care. I just needed to be far away from that place. Finally, I arrived at the main road and I kept running. I found an open diner. I went inside and used their phone to call the cops. I gave the police a report of what happened. Then they took me safely home. A few months later, I saw on TV that the fugitive from an asylum was caught. He was living in a cabin in the woods. It was the same guy that kidnapped me. Suddenly, I had the same feeling from that night. But at least the guy had been caught. Never again in my life have I hitchhiked. I'm 22 now, but this happened when I was 16. At the time, I lived in Staten Island, New York. For a little background, I'm a female, and at the time, I was 120 pounds soaking wet, with a height of 5'6". I thought I was invincible. I never imagined anything like this would have ever happened to me. It was March 17th of 2013, around 10.30pm. I was leaving my boyfriend's house. He walked me to the local bus stop as he always did. We joked and laughed while we waited for my bus to show up. Because it was kind of late, there weren't many cars on the street. I happened to notice a black SUV parked across the road. I didn't think much of it at the time. My bus eventually showed up and I said goodbye to my boyfriend and I boarded. I took a seat next to the bus driver. The rest of the bus was completely empty. The driver turned to me once we hit the first red light, and then he asked, What are you doing out this late? It was random and a bit creepy. I replied with, I was just hanging out with my boyfriend. We made small talk, and my initial apprehension was put at ease. The driver then told me that it wasn't exactly safe to be out and about at this hour, and that I should be more careful. I nodded, but as I said before, I was an arrogant 16-year-old who thought she was invincible. As my stop approached, I looked at my phone. The time read 11.30 p.m. My phone's battery was down to 5%. Oh, that's great, I thought to myself as I exited the bus and said my goodbyes to the driver. He told me to stay safe, and I gave him another nod as the door folded back shut. For some reason, I just stood there and watched the bus make its way down the street until its taillights were well out of sight. As I stood there at the empty stop, a sensation of what I can only describe as impending doom came over me. I made my way to the bench to sit down. The bus that dropped me off near my house was scheduled to arrive at 11.40. Only 10 minutes. As I sat there staring off into space, thinking about some things I had to do when I got home, a black SUV pulls up to the bus stop. The uneasy feeling I had earlier intensified. But I did my best to play it cool. The man rolls down his window and asks me, Hey, excuse me, do you know what time the bus is supposed to be here? He appeared to be a mix between Spanish and Asian, and had a medium build. At this point, I did not make the connection that this may have been the same vehicle I saw just before I boarded the first bus. I figured that he was probably just waiting for somebody, so I replied, It shouldn't be long. He then asked me how long I had been waiting. It was then that I started to get a little freaked out. This guy was giving me the creeps. But I considered that I might be just overreacting. Perhaps he was just trying to pass the time. But still, I kept my guard up. I answered that I hadn't been waiting long. He then proceeded to try to make more small talk. I was trying to be polite. But I also kept looking at my pitch black phone screen, trying to subtly hint to him that I wasn't interested in conversation. It was dark out by this point, 
the only luminescence was coming from some distant streetlights. However, there were also two big trees outside the bus stop that were positioned in such a way that they blocked out most of the light, so if the sky tried anything, the dark would have provided decent cover. I nervously clenched my phone, the uncomfortable feeling inside increasing with every passing second. He then told me that he was new to the area and didn't know his way around too well. He claimed that he was in the army and was stationed nearby. He then asked me where the beach was. It's just down the street. I told him in a very matter-of-fact way, as if to convey, maybe you should go there so I don't have to look at you anymore. It was then that our eyes met. I could see his face very clearly. His eyes were not like any normal human's eyes. It was as if they were looking right through me, staring at me like a hungry fox who just discovered a trapped, defenseless rabbit. He then asked me, Do you mind if you show me around? Come on, get in the car for a little while. I may have been a naive 16-year-old, but I was not an idiot. I knew that if I got in that car, that would be the last time anyone ever heard from me. I was trying my best to show him that I wasn't afraid, so I politely declined while looking down the street for my bus. He then began to beg and plead. It was really kind of pathetic. I told him no once again. He then said something that I will never forget. Come on, baby. It won't take long. I promise. At that moment, my blood ran cold, and my stomach felt like it was going to drop right out of my ass. I felt absolutely sick, like I was going to throw up. But I kept my cool, and thankfully my bus was now in sight and coming down the street. A feeling of relief washed over me. I told him no once again, thinking that would be the end of it. He then told me that he would drive me home right afterward. This guy would not give up, and I finally had enough. With all the strength and courage in me, I shouted, No, leave me the hell alone, you fucking loser! As my bus pulled up, I heard him say something genuinely terrifying. And I quote, Fine, bitch, I'll just follow you and see where you live. My heart started to race. My hands broke out in a cold sweat, and my body began to tremble with fear. I quickly got on the bus, and honestly, I don't know why I didn't tell the bus driver. I think I was just in a state of shock, and was hoping that Mr. Jailbait Hunter in the SUV didn't mean what he said and that he was just pissed off and trying to scare me. When I sat down and looked out of the window, I saw the headlights of the SUV. They were tailing the bus. I thought I was going to have a mental breakdown. When the bus arrived at my stop, I ran like hell. I reached the front door of my house, which was usually unlocked, but tonight, of all nights, it was locked from top to bottom. I frantically rang the doorbell while going through my bag to find my keys. I then heard someone pull up out front. Without turning around, I knew who it was. Just like in the movies, I dropped the keys as I was trying to put them in the front door. I finally managed to unlock my front door. Before turning the handle, I heard a car door slam shut from behind me. I quickly ran inside and slammed the door shut. In a panic, I explained to my mother and my older brother what happened. My brother ran outside and looked up and down the street. I was shaking, absolutely consumed by terror. My emotions finally got the best of me, and I could no longer hold back my tears. We called the police, and they came and searched the area. They asked me if I had gotten a tag number, and unfortunately, I had to tell the officers that it was too dark to see. But I did notice a sticker of some sort of bird on the backseat driver's side window. It didn't dawn on me until they left that this had been the same SUV that was across the street when I was with my boyfriend an hour prior. They told me that they checked the army base nearby and the surrounding area, but nobody had seen any vehicle matching the description I gave. All I could think about was what the bus driver had said to me and the irony of what took place that same night. Years went by and I didn't think much about this incident after that night. One day, I was scrolling through Facebook when I came across a picture my friend had posted. 
It was a story of a man who had been following her home from work for the past three days, and it was the same guy who I encountered five years prior. My heart felt like it was going to leap out of my throat. Looking at the post, I noticed that several other women had come forward, and they all shared similar experiences to mine. I ended up finding out that he almost kidnapped a 13-year-old girl. She allowed herself to be lured into his car, but once inside, she noticed a roll of duct tape, some rope, a pair of gloves, and a bottle of what turned out to be chloroform on the floorboard. She ended up jumping out of the window while they were stopped at a red light. I don't know all the details, but apparently he got physical with another woman, who was pregnant, and tried to force her into his car. He got pretty ballsy and started trying to abduct women in broad daylight. The news found out that his name was Leo, and it was also discovered that he had a wife and two daughters, who were around three and five. They interviewed his neighbors, and to my surprise, they defended him, saying that all these women were just lying. It's truly unbelievable how stupid people are. Five separate accounts from five different women who have no connection with each other have come forward and shared their experiences. Could you please dislodge your head from your ass and face up to the facts? Anyway, to this day, I have no idea whatever became of him. The last I heard, he was still at large. I hope they caught him, so no other young women have to be subjected to this monster ever again.